Welcome everyone to this new tutorial, API tutorial about curvy splines. Uh, so this is the third tutorial in a series uh, where we created a spline and then uh, set it up in the first tutorial and in the second one we created a cube, attached a spline controller and then uh, set it up also. Uh, so if we see what we have until now we have this, so a spline and a cube going on it. Now in this tutorial we are going to uh, be using uh, more methods uh, of uh, the API and to manually code the behavior of uh, spline controller or a very basic behavior of spline controller. So what we are going to do is to remove this code and we are going to do it, or it's equivalent in the update method. So to do that, I have first to uh, set this as a field, set this to, so I can use them in the update method. And now, so my cube, I will set its position at every frame to the following position, which is so spline dot interpolate for now we'll start we will start with this so basically what i'm doing here <coughs> is i am taking my spline i am getting the position that is at a, a tf uh, coordinate of zero so if you don't know what ftf means uh, i recommend you to see my other tutorial called uh, spline controller common mistakes I explain what's what it is about there but basically it's uh, you know a relative position where zero means the start of the spline one means the end of the spline so let's see what we have with this so I have my cube it's at the zero coordinate so for example if I put one here now it will be at the end of the spline so relative coordinate uh, up. so for those of you who don't know what the range attribute means it's basically it tells the inspector to show the field with this slider between 0 and 1. So now, let me just fix that, okay. Now I will be using this coordinate instead of 1. So as you will see, okay, I'm moving my, uh, my cube. So every frame I will increase uh, this coordinate and I will make sure it stays between 0 and 1. Okay. So as you can see now it moves but itself by itself. So let's remove this or yeah let's remove it. Now uh, if you see what uh, how the cube moves you will notice that it does not rotate to follow the spline. So here I have displayed both the tangents of the spline and the orientation, the up direction. And so what I'm going to do is to ask the cube to uh, follow uh, the rotation of the cube to follow the tangents. So uh, cube dot transform. And look at the rotation. And so I am setting a rotation that will look at the tangent direction and I will get the tangent by calling the get tangent method. And I will give it the same. Okay, I see the typo I did earlier. Uh, let me fix the typo first. Okay. 
Okay, so now let's look at the results. As you can see, the cube rotates also. As you can see, we have a method called interpolate here and inter interpolate <laughs> fast. And same thing for get tangents and get tangents fast. So basically, and you will see this fast alternative method for a lot of methods. So basically when there is the fast at the end, that means that it will use the cache. So if you don't know what uh, cache is, I recommend you to see my other uh, tutorial. Uh, what was, it? yeah, it was called just cache or caching, forgot. Uh, and, but basically you are, we will be using less precise but faster to compute uh, positions and uh, tangents. So, you know, we still have a very, very similar um, uh, result by using those methods. Okay, now let me tell you about another alternative, uh, which is interpolate by distance which has also its by distance fast, as you can see. And we have the same thing for get tangent, and you will find also other methods having by distance at the end. So now those methods, instead of having as an input uh, a TF, which is between zero and one, it is having a, a distance, which is between zero and the length of the spline. And if you look here at this spline, you can see that its length is 14. So first let me remove the range attribute. So I can, uh, let's call it absolute coordinate. So now we can modify this uh, beyond the 0, 1 range. And as you can see, up, it can move depending on the distance you are putting. If I move this spline, you will see that the cube will not flow it. There is a reason for that. Those methods, uh, they do have another parameter, which is called space, and it defines uh, in what space uh, the returned value, or in some cases, the input uh, parameters, in which space they are. So it's either self, which is the local space of the spline, or world, which is the global space. Uh, it's by default put to self because a lot of calculation is done in the local space. So for performance reasons, you uh, you don't want to uh, like. Uh, all the time bet uh, switch between local space and the global space because you know that that uses some CPU time. So by default it keeps everything in local space and if you need it you can ask to get the results in global space. So now my position will uh, be uh, the return position will be in global space. Let me do the same thing here. And now, by moving the spline, the cube follows it also. So another method that is uh, often used is uh, get nearest point. So to show you how to use that method, we will have I will add the sphere uh, to the scene, and by moving this sphere, I should. Uh, the, I will make the cube move to the nearest point to the sphere on the spline. So, first let me add this input uh, sphere transform. Okay. Now, if I go to my script, I can put a transform and I put the sphere there. So, uh, I will, so instead of using this coordinate, I will use another one, but to, to, do, to do things step by step, 
let me just go back to using the methods that use tf instead of distance. So I will take my spline and call get nearest point tf. So you can see that there are a lot of signatures, uh, but I will be using the third one, uh, the fourth one, this one. So I will give it as an input the sphere's position. Then I will set as an output uh, the nearest point to the sphere and I should specify because my input sphere position is in the global space I should specify here that I'm using the world space okay so here I will do something that is not the most efficient one but this method got me the nearest, the TF of the nearest point, I, and I am then interpolating that point, getting its position, and then getting the rotation. So if I move the sphere up, it follows it. But here I am having already the nearest point, so I can just put that point here. No need to interpolate it again, and it is the same result. Okay. So let's yeah, let's keep that. And if I want, for some reason, to work with distances, if I just give the TF, that would not work. So I can get the equivalent distance by calling spline dot TF to distance, and then I am giving the TF value. Up, and then using that distance and again it's working uh, so you know those, the methods I showed you are the most basic ones and you have other ones but you know once you understood for example tf2 distance then you can understand and know how to use distance to TF. You have also the get orientation, uh, get orientation up fast uh, to get the orientation, this yellow uh, uh, direction. And you know, then of course there are more methods, but that's the basic methods you need. As always, I hope this helped you and have a nice day.